cool. Well, yeah, I know you've, so you've opened up human clinics and animal clinics. Which yeah. ones was the easiest, would you say? Um, There's many regulations and things. The, like well, the human stuff, you know, you got, it's it's really tough because every time you open up a human center, mm-hmm. you got to get credentialed for insurances. Right. The insurances don't want you in, involved. So it's oh, really wow. a very difficult situation when you have hospitals that already have stuff and you're competing with hospitals. Right. Um, they want to make it as difficult as possible for you to get accredited. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so... Capital Blue Cross and Medicare and everything they would take as as little time that they can basically do and make and stretch it out and really give you no support in it and then when they do come back with reimbursement situation it's mm-hmm. lower than anybody else around and you're sort of f- forced to accept it All right. and so you know we were getting paid at the time for for human scans from Medicare was three hundred and twenty seven dollars a scan. And oh. you could barely survive when you got brand new equipment and service right. contracts and all this other stuff that goes right. along with it. So it's sort of like, how can you keep these things going except by doing 30 scans a day? Yeah. And if you weren't doing that many, you were hurting. Mm. And so in the beginning with all these, we were doing well. We were busy. And uh, then the insurance cutbacks, when they cut back 60-some percent, now you're getting 200 and some dollars a scan. Right. And I was like, I'm done. I'm no throwing way. in the towel. Yeah. I, I was literally putting my savings account to pay oh. salaries on employees and stuff like that. Right. So it was really hard. And I can imagine and patient care just takes a big hit when it they does. do that, right? It does. And yeah. then you needed, you know, we needed JCO accreditation and ACR oh. accreditation and all right. this stuff. And veterinary, nothing. It was <laughs> oh, like, <nice. laughs> it's basically put a center together and there's no accreditation <laughs> stuff. So there's no need. concern about HIPAA either? Nothing. Okay. Nope. Wow, that's awesome. Not dealing with any of that stuff. Wow. So, you know, it's really, once you have that background and knowledge of how to set up an imaging center, veterinary comes easy. Wow. And, uh, and so what we do, though, is if some unique stuff. We have very specific protocols that we use for veterinary imaging. And being MR tech, I had to learn anatomy all over again because <laughs> animal anatomy, there is not... Like, okay, dogs are close, cats, but it's still a situation that they have a different number of vertebrae and they have, right. you know, their brains are are different than ours. So everything that you did with human stuff, you had to throw it out the door right. and start all over with learning the, the veterinary anatomy, especially when nice. you're doing monkeys and, and pigs and, yeah. and oh, just man. horses. So many varieties, <laughs> oh, right? Oh, yeah, like, everything. So oh my gosh. It's, it's pretty cool. We had a, a center down at uh, NC State University and we would do equine imaging there. And um, the first thing that, you know, we started, we, we get set up with it and everything, and nobody realized that you should pretty much put a catheter in a horse when it's under anesthesia, because once you put them in the scanner and they just lose all bodily Bound, function, yeah. it is basically everywhere. So <laughs> my staff was cleaning uh, <laughs> cleaning the MR scanner for oh. a little bit, and uh, we're not happy with it. So after that, we started catheterizing all the, the horses that we would do. So. <laughs> Lesson it, learned. It, right? Oh yeah, when, and it comes made, out guess, in so. gallons, not just a little oh, bit. It's gallons. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So, so of the pretty. imaging modalities, you guys offer CT, MRI. Are those the two? Yeah, pretty much. We we sort of stick with that. Um, I, I think that's just been our forte and and really a scenario that wouldn't everybody it, focuses on. It wouldn't it also be easy to introduce X ray. It, most of the vet practices around, even from general oh. vets to specialty pra- practices, all Doing have X-ray already. Okay. Ultrasound so, as well. Ultrasound too. Yeah, okay. it's such a, a, a low cost modalities mm-hmm. that they can do it at a, for themselves. But when you start getting into MR and CT, and the costs get up there, uh, you know, we just put a, uh, a over a million dollar system in uh, in out in Tacoma, Washington, at a group, oh, nice. and they put one of the top of the line uh, scanners out there. So wow. it's it's getting to a point now that. They all know, you know, I want eight channels or I want 16 right. channels and I want, you know, higher end technology because it's giving them more information. Oh, and awesome. so uh, so when you're looking at, you know, scanning a, a cat brain or a, a really small dog's brain and you don't have the resolution to do it at low field right. or, you know, sometimes even one five, it makes it very difficult. Their spinal canal is like a couple millimeters in size. So. You got to be able to do really small fields of view, really right. high resolution images, and the better scanner, the better quality you're going to get, as you guys know that. 